empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. That's what this life-giving water from the temple of God, this figurative prophetic picture does. It brings life to the deadness. And it says swarms of living creature will live wherever the river flows. And there are large numbers of fish because this water flows uh, there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Say this after me. Where the river flows, everything will live. We're coming into a good point in a second. Listen, stay with me. Swarms of living creatures, life. Fishermen will stand along the shore from Engedi to Engaling, uh, Eng- Engalim. And there are the places where they will be spreading their nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swamps and the marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. And their leaves will not wither. There will not be seasons where sometimes there will be leaves and other times there won't be leaves because these trees are on the banks of this living water flowing from the very throne of God. There will be life all year round. Leaves will not wither. The fruit will not fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. The fruit will serve for food. Their leaves for healing. What does that passage remind you of? Turn with me to Revelation 22. And this is the promise for the the, the end of time when Eden will be restored. Then the angel showed me the river of living water as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and his lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. So when Jesus, standing up on the great, on the final and the greatest day of of, of the festival said to everybody standing there, having witnessed the joyous pouring out of the water of life, the living water from the pool of Siloam, and thanking God for his provision. When they saw this, Jesus, knowing what Colossians 2 would say when Paul wrote it, that, that these were a shadow of the things to come, but the fulfillment, the reality of those things is in Christ. Jesus said, You're celebrating the pouring out of this living water. But if anyone is thirsty, come to the fulfillment of what you have just witnessed. Come to me and drink. Come to me and drink, he says. And out of their belly, out of their inmost being will flow rivers of living water. Wow. Jesus said, this is an amazing picture. An amazing picture of what God is going to do in the pouring out of his Holy Spirit. But if you want to have that thirst in your soul quenched, if you want to see the fulfillment of this very thing in your midst, come to me. Because I am the one who gives living water. A few pages back in John's Gospel, when, John, when Jesus sorry, met with the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, and she was drawing water on her own in the middle of the day, And Jesus asked her for a drink. He says, will you give me a drink? The Samaritan woman said, listen, you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. This isn't supposed to go down. But listen, you haven't even got a bucket to draw water with. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him. That's Jesus. And he would have given you what? Living water. And she doesn't understand yet. And goes on, are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank from it himself? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water, this natural living water, will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give them will what? Never thirst. Indeed, the water that I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus is the source of of living water. And when in Acts 2 we see the fulfillment of the promise that Jesus made to the disciples that the gift of the Father would be given to all those who would call themselves believers, the Holy Spirit was poured out 
in a measure that we can't even begin to imagine. And some people here today, when you pray, you pray, God, would you open the heavens and pour out your spirit? Don't pray like that anymore. Because the, the God who is the God of the universe and your Father has poured out the Spirit without measure. And you have every spiritual blessing in Christ. You already have all that he wants you to have. The fullness of the Holy Spirit is at your disposal. You don't have to beg your Father to give you a single other thing because he longs for you to be filled and full with the Spirit of God. You don't have to convince him to bless you because you are blessed in Christ. Amen? And so, when Jesus, standing at this festival, stood up, and when he said, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink, he was talking both to those who liked him and those who didn't like him very much. He was talking to the religious leaders and the Pharisees, the people who would eventually try and track him down and kill him, hang him on a cross. And he was saying to them as well, if anyone is thirsty, come to me and drink. He was talking to the desperate. He was talking to those who were spiritually thirsty. And he was saying, listen, come to me and drink. He was talking to those who were indifferent and didn't care. He said, come to me and drink. And what qualified all of those people was their need. If anyone is thirsty, come to me and drink. And so this morning, the thing that qualifies you to receive the living water from Jesus isn't how much you know, it isn't your theology, you know, it doesn't matter how many years you've been studying the Bible, it doesn't matter how long you've been attending church, it doesn't matter how much you put in the offering this morning. None of those things are what qualifies you. The only thing that qualifies you is your need. If anyone is thirsty, Jesus says, come to me and drink. While I was on, on um, sabbatical, I was given a book which I began to read. And it was um, a pastor of a church um, in the UK actually was um, going through the process of trying to work out why, even though their hearts hungered to see more of God, in their midst, in the presence of God and the power of God in their midst and more effectiveness in reaching out to the community, they realized that there was, there was something wrong. Things weren't quite as they should be. And so they, in prayer one day, just had, a, a, the pastor had a picture and it was a picture of when um, his children went on holiday with him. So if you've been to the seaside, you know that sometimes along the beach flow these little streams, you know, the little kind of you know, the little bits of water that go down to the sea. And what his children loved to do was collect rocks and put these rocks in the streams to create a dam to stop these rivers flowing. And he realized, as the Lord showed him this, that that was what was happening in his church. So the, the rivers of living water, everything that they needed, were at their disposal. Jesus had given them all that they needed. He, on his side, wasn't stingy with the supply but they weren't seeing the fruit, the outworking of the rivers of living water, both in their own lives individually, but also corporately as a church. And so what the Lord showed them was that there were rocks in the stream. There were things in their own lives individually. There were things that had landed corporately that were stopping the free flowing of the rivers of living water. And so some things that they identified were things like um, pride, uh, unforgiveness, um, lack of faith, those kinds of things. And as uh, the Lord revealed those things, they repented as a fellowship and they prayed in the opposite spirit that God would, would give them more faith, that God would humble them and they would walk with a humble and contrite heart before him. But they asked the question, Lord, what are the rocks in the stream? And where I'd like to finish today is by asking us the same question. So we long as a fellowship to see Jesus' name glorified, don't we? We love Jesus, don't we? And we want to see him glorified both in our midst and in this town and in this nation. We long for that, don't we? And so if we all long for that, and if we know that how we get from here to there is by living obedient, Christ-honoring lives, what is it that stops us living those kind of lives? 
What are those boulders in the streams of living water that Jesus has put in our innermost being that stops them from flowing? What are they for us individually? But also, what are those things corporately? Because we, let me speak on behalf of you, because I think I know your heart by now. We want to see people know the word of God and for that truth to set them free. We want to see all of the things that hold people back from experiencing the fullness of life that Jesus promised. He said, the thief comes to to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and life in all of its fullness. And so the devil wants to keep people chained up and, and not experiencing the fullness of life that Jesus has for them. And so we long to see people set free from their prisons and walk into the fullness that Jesus has for them, yeah? We long for that. And we long to see signs and wonders and miracles accompanying the preaching of the gospel. We long to see the sick healed. We long to see the hurting held. We long to see all of the burdens that people have been carrying cast off and that, and that Jesus would just make us whole. And we long ultimately not just that we would have a great experience in God's presence, but we long for the presence of God and the weightiness of the, sh- of the Shekinah glory of God to rest on this fellowship. We long for that, don't we? And we long ultimately that everything that we do and everything we say and everything we attempt for the Lord will ultimately result in his glory. We long for that. We long for that. We want Jesus to be lifted up in this town. We want the lost to be saved. We want the darkness to be, to be expelled as the light of the kingdom of God comes. We long for that. So what is it that's stopping the free flow of the rivers of living water from our lives individually and from us as a church corporately? I'm going to ask right now that the Holy Spirit will just begin to speak. And I want you to just still your heart and just allow the Holy Spirit to begin speaking to you. And I want you to know today, if you didn't already know it, that if you are a believer, Jesus has put within you a spring of living water, the Holy Spirit. In Romans it says that if, if we don't have the Holy Spirit, we don't belong to him. But for every person here today who belongs to him, you have the Holy Spirit. You may not have been baptized. You may not have experienced the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has so much more for you. But the Holy Spirit dwells within each one here who is a believer. He has put within you a spring of living water. And he says in his word that out of our innermost beings will flow. Will flow. Not stop and start. Not be turned on and off like a tap. But will continue to flow rivers of living water. What are the boulders what are the rocks in your stream holy spirit would you just begin to reveal those things to us now lord god we're not just playing games this isn't just one of those things where we we identify something and think oh that's nice and then move on to the next thing father i pray that the conviction of the holy spirit will accompany this father and lord you will show us what we need to do to take that boulder out of the river father for each one of us here will you show us father where there's pride where there's discouragement, Father, where there's deceit, Father, even where we don't even know that we believe wrong things, Lord God, would you just expose that in our lives and show us the truth? Father, where there's offense, where there's hurt, even hatred, Father, would you expose those things in our hearts? Would you show us the boulders in the river, the rocks in the stream? And you might be asking yourself, okay, all I've identified the rock. There it is. I can see it. And you can see the living water just building up behind it. And you see that there's this momentum behind it, this pressure that's building up behind it. What do I do, Lord, to remove this rock from the stream? For some of you today, you need to forgive someone. For some of you today, you need to repent of sin in your life. And you need to receive Jesus' forgiveness and his strength to live your life differently. For some of you today, Jesus needs to bring healing to a hurt. And you need to repent of not allowing him to come in and do that before now. He loves you so much. And his healing is perfect. What is it for you today? What are the rocks in your stream? Just allow the Holy Spirit to identify it. And whatever you need to do in this moment, even if you begin a process today, just begin. 
Just respond. And even in your mind's eye as you deal with that thing before the Lord right now, just imagine reaching down into the stream and picking that rock up and moving it to the side, taking it out of the water and putting it onto the bank. Holy Spirit, just begin to flow. Lord God, where there's been a blockage, just begin to flow. And I want to ask you to do something else as well. Not right now, but I want you to take away there's a piece of paper in your update. And on the piece of paper, it talks about the same kind of thing and it asks um, for you if you have any insights into um, any rocks that might be present in our midst as a fellowship. What are the rocks in our stream as a fellowship? I want you to take away that piece of paper and pray, prayerfully seek God for answers to that question. And then I want you to bring them back next week. And I'm expecting that God will show us themes. You know, sometimes we don't always see things that are right under our noses, but I, I just believe that the Lord's going to show us through this process those things that we need to repent of corporately as a church because we want the, the rivers of living water to flow in Hope Church and beyond. Amen. Amen. I wonder if you can stand to your feet. Brendan, would you just begin to come and, and, and play? We've, um, we've run out of time, but listen, um, if you don't have to rush off, I invite you to stay. The service is now officially at an end. So if you want to go and get a cup of coffee and you want to, to chat to your friends, then, then there's an area in the restaurant where you're able to go. You know, If you have children that are restless, you're very welcome to take them as well. But listen, if you want to stay and do business with the Lord right now, I'm going to be praying for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask for those who feel that they're dry, that the Holy Spirit will come and just refresh their souls. I'm going to ask for those who are just struggling in, in different areas of life, that the Lord will come and just break through all of those obstacles and that the Holy Spirit will flow freely in your life, in your family, in this church, in this town and in this nation. So um, as Brendan begins to play and, and those who are leaving just quietly leave, and we're just going to focus our hearts on Jesus again. Just continue to worship him for a few minutes and just bring your heart to a place of submission before him. In Jesus' name. Sovereign. 
the Holy Spirit is God. He's a person. Because he's God, he's also Lord. And if anyone here um, has in their minds this impression that when we ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit, it's about a, a, you know, a nice experience that we have. It's about a, a nice sensation that we have in our hearts. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all feelings based. Let me just, just remind you that when we talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit, we're talking about surrender to God. We're talking about bringing ourselves under the Lordship of Almighty God through the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit today, you're not just opening your hands and saying, Lord, give me a really lovely experience of you. What you're saying is I determine with your strength and your power to live a life of obedience, of surrender. I yield my life to you and come and fill me, not so that I can have a good experience. I thank you that that might be the, the byproduct of it. But Lord God, today I bring myself under your Lordship. I make you Lord of my life. I want to keep in step with the Spirit. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. What he wants to do in my life is what I want to do with my life. And so as you open your heart to him now and you say, Lord, Father, send your spirit, pour your spirit out, refresh my soul with your Holy Spirit, fill me with your Holy Spirit. You're asking him to fill you with his power and his life and his love and his strength and his enabling. You're asking him ultimately to be the Lord of your life. And if you're not prepared to make the Holy Spirit Lord of your life, don't ask him to fill you today. But if you are prepared in this moment to yield your heart to him, ask the Holy Spirit to fill your life right at this moment. Ask him. Don't wait for me. Just begin right where you are to cry out to God and say, Lord, I'm feeling dry. Come and refresh this parched soil in my life. Come and wash through me to get rid of all the debris that the life has left in my heart, Lord God. Come and fill me and empower me to do the things that I want to do but can't do in my own strength. Lord, I've tried so hard in my own strength to do these things and it just leaves me feeling frustrated. There's no fruit when I do it myself. But Lord, when it's you, Lord God, I see fruit. I see life. I see power. Father, come and fill me so that I don't have to do this on my own. Fill me, Holy Spirit. Fill me full of you. Fill me full of your life. Fill me full of your power. Fill me full of your enabling. Father, come and wash through me like rivers of living water father and i repent of those rocks in the stream because lord i want you to flow, flow freely from my life lord god when i'm out in the shops lord god i want the rivers of living water to flow from me to the people that, that i bump into lord in in public places lord god and i want them to experience jesus because of the holy spirit in me i want them to see truth because of the holy spirit in me i want them to come under conviction because of the holy spirit in me i don't want to do this it's on my own anymore Lord God I need you cry out to him today say Holy Spirit fill me afresh fill me afresh fill me afresh fill me I'm a, I'm a vessel waiting to be filled Lord God all of you all of you your fullness in my life come on cry out to him right now Holy Spirit Holy Spirit come Father refresh restore renew revive empower enable Lord God, pour the love of the Father into our hearts right now, Lord God. May we never be the same, Lord God. Transform us, Lord God, into the likeness of Jesus. Renew our commitment in this moment, Lord God, to serving you with an undivided heart, Father. We make you Lord. Jesus, be glorified in our lives through the Holy Spirit's presence. Holy Spirit, come right now. Come right now, Lord God. Come and fill our hearts. Just ask the Lord. Your, your heavenly father just to fill you right now how much more the scriptures say will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask just ask him i wonder if you can um just turn to maybe a, a friend who is sitting near, nearby you and just ask if they will pray for you as you seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit and then maybe um, you can pray for them too I just wonder if we can begin to minister to one another you do that Jesus